Now, importance of storing cord blood, as I explained just now, there are more than 80 over diseases proven today as mainstream that cord blood stem cells can be used for, from leukemia to thalassemia and things like that. And understanding this, uh, back in the days of 2003, um, uh, we, we understand our obligation as a, as a healthcare company to operate in this space is very difficult because you not only just have shareholders to answer to, you have effectively stakeholders to answer to. You, as a healthcare company, you cannot reject a person at a door who's dying. Seriously, how can we? We operate in that space, there's this level of conscience, right? But important thing element is this, when we operate in this space, like the first child that was pinned on our wall uh, in our office right, along the corridor, his name is Ryan Fu. Today he's 13 years old. When uh, he was diagnosed with uh, AML, very acute um, uh, um, leukemia, back in 2003, uh, one of the professors in KKH basically counseled the parents and said, it may be uh, you should conceive a second child, right? And so that maybe there's a good chance that a second child can provide the stem cells uh, to the first child. We did it for free. Sorry, uh, okay, but we did it for free. We stored the second child's cord blood stem cells for about a year and a half. Then finally, when after the Ryan went through uh, full chemotherapy, he was like a skid. Totally no immunity system in his blood at all. Uh, the sister's cord blood was infused into him. He's totally out of remission today. He's cured. So this is what we do uh, as a company, future regenerative therapies. Okay. Now, um, just recent um, developments, when we listed as a company uh, in accordance to the prospectus, uh, Singapore uh, Cord Life Group Limited, essentially through Hong Kong, our sub wholly owned subsidiary, owns 10% uh, of the Guangzhou Cord Blood Bank. Um, after our listing, uh, Chinese, the Chinese Cold Blood Bank uh, attracted Mr. KKR, a very big uh, private equity fund in the US. They put about 65 million US into uh, Chinese uh, Cold Blood Bank. And uh, one of the first things those guys said was, hey, I need accreditation, I need quality, because this entire business in healthcare is nothing but credibility. So why not you guys uh, ask if uh, the folks in Cold Blood, uh, in, in Cold Life, would prefer to uh, own shares in the listed company and have someone in there be a board member to drive quality process in China. Because you know what, I, I don't want another milk powder scares or things like that. So that was, was what happened, it was very opportunistic. I see that as a way to further unlock value for shareholders. Because between owning a private stake in a private company in China and owning shares in a public company in the US, which is better? Right, I mean, um, common finance theory had taught me that the marketability discount of owning a private company is between 30 to 50 percent, isn't it? So they negotiated with us and said, I expected them to basically push us to get a discount, but I said, no, I want uh, what I IPO at, 10 times historical earnings. Yeah, so uh, they basically took shares out of their treasuries, right? We disposed our shares back to them, they cancelled away the shares. We bought shares from the proceeds from the treasuries, not new share issues. So that we totally unlock value for us. Now today, the total cost of investment for a Chinese uh, Guangzhou stake plus the acquisition of the remaining 10% stake in China Court cost Court Life USD $14 million. I own 7.43 million shares today. Share price closing yesterday, $3.35 per share. It's about $27 million now in terms of market value. Okay. Now, um, this is the acquisition that we did. Uh, there was a first round refusal, and I will not bore you through the complicated uh, technical issues of the first round refusal and all that. All in short, right, we bought over the operating entities and the assets and the business of um, the Australian company. We scoop it all up to drive organic growth uh, in all these three markets in India, Philippines, and Indonesia, completed 28th of June last month. The uh, total consideration was of Australian dollars, $5.5 million, which is great because Aussie dollar is going down. Timing was great. And uh, what happened was um, we, they had issued to us a convertible. We had actually, okay, they, they have actually issued to us a convertible note okay, uh, of $1.5 million Aussie. And when I required them to redeem uh, the entire thing, the net cash payable to, that, uh, to, to them was $4 million Aussie. Net tangible asset of the three acquisition stands at Australian $3.7 million. 
So my premium over the net tangible asset acquisition is only $300,000. No earnings drag. Um, basically, this is the structure today. This is how Court Life looks like. There are some documents that we essentially have to complete the entire thing. But what we have, in essence, is a presence today in the space that we are operating all the way from India. And if you do count in my Chinese operations as well, all the way from India to China. That's what we are today. Facility, not that, some bragging rights here, bought property. But what's the significance of us buying a property? This number, 6.9 million in Singapore, always reminds us that inflation will always be here. Property prices, regardless of how you look at it, will still be there. Okay, government step in and do a curbs here and there and everything, but there will still be a slowly steady state growth in terms of prices for property, isn't it? We all know that, 6.9 million, we can't run away from it. So the only way to curb, and you know what, my, my uh, arrangement with my customers and my patients is that it's a long tail contract, at least 21 years. So if it's 21 years, then I do not want to subject my future earnings or pass my future, earn, or pass my future cost to my customers, regardless it's bad, to my customers. So the important thing for me is to try to lock in as fast as possible, whatever cost there is today, so that I don't have to worry about future rising costs in the future. We bought a property, B1 clustered in Yishun, and it's a 60-year uh, lease property, B1 clustered, which means to say that I can load, and, and it's, it's special because in the sense that um, for most industrial property, there's a special loading for every floor that's catered to our needs. It's 7.5 kilotons, uh, 7.5 tons to square meter. Uh, that kind of requirement, industrial requirement. So basically what I could do is that I could kind of like pack my tanks literally next to each other so that I can maximize the EU per square feet. That's what we do. New services in Singapore, this is a court tissue banking business where I talk about master climber stem cells just now for you know, um, myocardial infarction, heart, which is now current, currently happening. The clinical trials are happening right now. Uh, phase two, in fact, uh, ischemic stroke, uh, osteoarthritis, which has been done, done in, uh, in NUH already, and um, uh, pulmonary um, uh, fibrosis, which is lung scarring. Now, it contains also epithelial cells. And what are epithelial cells? Cells that have the ability uh, to regenerate the epidermis skin. So if a patient has got diabetic ulcer wounds that cannot be healed, right? Uh, third degree burns, uh, cuts that has uh, long-term effects on you, Right. Um, this essentially will be used to quickly heal the healing process of the, of the skin.